Hello and a very warm welcome to our webinar today. It goes out to our customers, to our students, interested engineers, and of course, as always, to the competitors. My name is Stefan Häuser. I'm your moderator for today's webinar with the title Complement Solar with the Optimized Energy Storage. Pairing energy storage with solar and other renewables is becoming a major trend. But that brings you to the question whether an AC or DC coupled energy storage system is the right choice. And to answer that question, the full system architecture must be considered. And this is what my colleague Emilio will do today in this webinar. Before we get started with the presentation, some words about our webinar platform. In case of any connection issues to the presentation stream or just the sound, please try to reconnect using the button on the very top of your browser window. In your browser window on the right hand side, you see the chat window, which you can actually hide to increase the presentation window. In case you have any comments or difficulties, please let us know via the chat. All messages are private and can only be seen by ourselves. If you have any questions about the content, please mark your comment as a question with the Q&A mode button. We will try to answer as many questions as possible at the end of this presentation. And all the questions we do not manage to answer today will then be answered by email during the next days. Also, you can send us an email to webinar at semicron.com anytime and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Finally, we will also share the slides as a PDF file at the very end of the presentation and you will see the download button just below the chat window. Some words are about your president, presenter today. That's uh, Emilio Meza. He's the product marketing manager for energy storage, low power string solar and EV charging here at Semicron. Emilio holds a degree in electrical engineering after studying at the Texas A&M University and an MBA from the University of Massachusetts. Emilio has been with Semicron for eight years, beginning as a project manager for power electronics stacks in the US, and later he moved into sales before joining us here in Germany with the product marketing in our headquarter. So enjoy the webinar. Emilio, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stefan. So before we get started, I'd like to say a few words about uh, Semicron itself. We are headquartered in Nuremberg, Germany with 25 operating companies worldwide. Eight of these countries have Semicron production sites with 3,000 employees worldwide, half of those located in Germany here. Last year in 2019, we had about 534 million euros turnover, and uh, we hope to do even better this year, if not the years coming. A little bit about our product range. We go from chips all the way up to systems. We have discrete uh, diristor, diodes, diristors, chips, uh, the diodes and diristors we produce ourselves and package. Our core competency is the power modules going from the low power mini skip and semi top packages all the way up to the skip IPMs at 3600 amps. Our skip IPM has the power module, driver, heat sink, and current sensing along with other types of sensing all in one single package for a nice integrated design for much easier uh, access for overall design. Using these power modules along with our skip platform. We put these along with our gate drivers, additional capacitors, and so forth, and what we call our power electronic stacks. These can be liquid cooled, air cooled. We can have system stacks going all the way up to the megawatt scale, and these are off the shelf ready for your use. Of course, with those, we have our IGBT drivers, our Skyper and SKHI platforms. These are nice and isolated for easy uh, uh, going from control down to the power electronics uh, with a nice, safe use. In the systems area, we have automotive type systems, such as our Sky 2 high voltage and our Sky 3 low voltage. Now, today we'll be talking about solar plus storage, looking a little bit more into the AC coupled systems along with DC coupled systems, and then concluding at the end. So, to get started. Solar plus storage. With the market coming up with solar quite a bit, uh, we're seeing a huge increase in the supply of solar. However, uh, the demand, as you'll see, is not quite equal to where this, the solar is supplied. Solar, of course, is best uh, producing during the day when there's sunlight out. However, demand does not happen so consistently. We have nice big peaks in the morning hours before people go to work and after they get home. So of course the, the supply does not match the demand 
Therefore, the question is, how do we get this power to the people when they need it while increasing the renewables that we have? Uh, according to Green Tech Media, more than 55% of annual energy storage deployments are expected to be paired with solar by 2023. So that means as, as energy storage is installed in the coming years, we do have to make sure that we consider how that we're pairing it with solar, make sure that we come up with an optimized system and uh, make sure that we do this efficiently and cost effectively so that solar can continue to grow. So then the next question, how is storage connected to the grid? So there's two possibilities. Right now we have AC coupled, and this is basically that the PV is connected directly to the grid with a solar inverter. And the energy storage batteries are also connected from a DC to an AC inverter to the grid. So this is coupled on the AC side to the grid. Um, really the big focus here is this DC to AC converter bi-directional power flow for the energy storage system. In addition, we also have DC coupled systems on the rise. So as we have PV going to the grid through this DC to AC inverter, we then tie into this DC with a DC to DC inverter going to the batteries. So a lot of our systems are using 1500 volts in the PV and we'll take a look at how we can achieve that along with our batteries, whether it's DC to DC or if we're doing a standalone system, DC to AC. Now let's start with our AC coupled systems. So with this, we'll be really focusing on the DC to AC inverter here, going in a, like I said, a bi-directional approach. That way we need to have a power factor of plus one all the way down to minus one. So the thing to consider here is that it may be less than the 1500 volts DC. However, on the AC side, we still wanna get that transformer as small and cost-effective as possible. And um, with a higher voltage, you can output more power. So we may see batteries on the on the rise with the voltage. However, they're all uh, there are also some systems working at say 950 or 1,000 volts or so. So th both need to be considered. Now, traditionally, with the three-level approach or with solar in the recent years, we're using a lot of NPC topologies. And one way to do this is we have three industrial standard half bridges. Here we're using our 1400 amp semi-trans 10 package. Um, so we can put three of these power modules in to make an NPC type topology. The total mo module area is a little over 660 square centimeters. And we at Semicron asked ourselves, how can we do this a little bit more effectively? So what we've come up with is an NPC design, again, 1400 amps. However, we split it among two modules using two thirds of the total module area. The big focus here is getting power density and making a, an easier connection. On top of that, you'll notice that T5 and T6, they're not really used in an NPC type design. So that gives us a little bit more space to work with with our, with our D5 and D6 diodes. Um, and what we've done here is made a nice low inductance package uh, with nice easy access to the AC, neutral, DC plus and minus terminals. So again, still able to do 1400 amps, but really increase the power density. Um, and with this uh, low inductance type package, we can go over the full power factor range in a liquid cooled type system. We can go up to about two megawatts and air cooled 1.3 megawatts and that's without paralleling. So I wanna take a moment and look further into how these NPC type topologies actually work. So on the left here, you'll see a pretty standard waveform. I have the voltage here in blue and the current in red. This is a power factor of one, meaning that the current and the voltage are in phase. Uh, that means when the voltage is positive, the current is also positive, And when the voltage is negative, the current is also negative. And taking a look at the first half of this curve, so positive current, positive voltage. And looking at the right, seeing our NPC type topology and where the, the commutation, where the, where the current flows through this topology. And we're working on the positive side. So we have DC plus out to overall inductance is lower and you can switch a little bit faster without worrying about large over voltages in the system. And then as we move to the negative side, you'll basically see the same thing on the negative side of the topology. 
we have current flowing backwards from AC out to neutral or AC out to DC minus. So here you're mostly focused on um, this, uh, this diode is seeing some switching. Uh, you're seeing this transistor seeing some switching. And overall, this, this transistor in the middle is pretty consistently on for the entire uh, part of this 50 hertz wave. So you'll see that the, the uh, inside transistors see a lot of, of the conduction and the outside transistors and the clamping diodes see more of the switching. So it's pretty easy here to, to focus on using better switching losses or better conduction losses for your chips and, and really trying to optimize this NPC topology. However, that's for a power factor of one. What happens if we move away from one? So we've done just this. On the left side, you'll see a, a waveform where the current is lagging the voltage. So they're not quite in phase. So this could be, say, a 0.8 power factor or moving further away. So again, let's, let's really step through this and take a look at, at what's happening in our system. To start off with, we have a positive voltage and a negative current. And on the right, you'll see the commutation loop. And already you're starting to notice, or you should be starting to notice that the commutation loop overall is bigger. So if you, if you make a big loop, you'll see that it, it is bigger. So the inductance is going to be higher. Uh, and in this fashion, if you are switching very quickly with a larger inductance and fast switching, you will see a higher voltage. Um, so you have AC flowing out from DC plus, and again, AC flowing out to neutral. And it has to flow downwards so that it can come through the lower clamping diode. And then as we step forward, the positive current and positive voltage, very similar to uh, before with a power factor of one. So DC plus and neutral both flowing out toward the AC with a nice smaller commutation loop. But of course, the time is decreased where it stays in this state. And then as we have a negative voltage, but the current remains positive, you'll see again a larger commutation loop. So neutral and DC minus flowing out to AC. Neutral must go through the, the, uh, the upper clamping diode to come out to AC. And in the end, again, both, both negative for the current and the voltage. So AC flowing out through neutral and DC minus. So as we step away from a power factor of one, you'll see that uh, um, the, the inside transistors here, they're not just handling uh, the conduction for, for the, the half of the waveform you're seeing some other uh, components here handling more of the, say, conduction losses or more of the switching losses. So it, it becomes much more difficult to optimize this system with either faster switching with uh, lower switching losses or maybe slower switching with better conduction losses. And that's really the point here is that as we have the, the power factor less than one or even down to minus one, say, when the battery is charging, that's when we're seeing a lot of inefficiencies in our NPC type topologies. So how about we use a different topology? Let's use an active neutral point clamp topology with a power factor starting of one for an ideal system. So on the right here, you'll see the NPC topology and it looks a little bit different. The main differences here are that these clamping diodes are now paired with IGBTs. So rather than, um, than having four transistors and six diodes, we have six transistors and six diodes. And let's step through this again. So positive current, positive voltage, we have DC plus and neutral flowing out to the AC. Um, you'll notice that the overall, this, this uh, transistor on the closest to the AC side is handling most of the conduction while switching happens between the top transistor and the diode below it. So you can focus on getting nice switching losses on the input side and very low conduction losses on the output side. And then as we move away, as we move further down the waveform, come to the negative side, you'll see the same thing. It's symmetrical that currents flowing from AC out to neutral and DC minus. And again, nice small commutation loop on this half bridge while the transistor on the bottom of the output side on the AC side is seeing all the conduction losses. So, then the case that was difficult for the NPC, we're moving away from power factor of one. So this is not the ideal system anymore. 
So let's start out. Remember, NPC was uh, a little bit more difficult with this first step. But as we see the NPC, uh, the ANPC, the commutation loop is still pretty small. So as we move from AC, the current comes out to DC plus and neutral, we're still keeping uh, conduction losses on the output side, as we call it. So this diode is seeing um, the conduction. It's switching at maybe uh, 50 or, or 60 hertz, depending on the grid frequency, while the, the input side, so closest to the DC plus and neutral, they're seeing all of the switching losses. So you have still switching between an IGBT and a diode here. So again, if you keep uh, the switching losses low on the input side, call it, then you can still optimize for the system. With a positive current, positive voltage, as we just went through, you'll see that uh, we still keep the small commutation loop and all of the conduction losses are happening closest to the AC side. Again, as we move through and we see that the voltage is negative, the current is positive. Again, very small commutation loop. And we have the conduction going out through this diode on the output. And finally, in the negative side, we'll see the same thing. So what we've done here is we've decoupled the induction um, from, or the, the commutation loops from the power factor. Even if we have a negative power factor, we will keep the same commutation loops. So all of this was done with keeping a high frequency on what we call the input side and a low frequency on the output side. Therefore, with a high frequency at your pulse width modulation frequency, say uh, some kilohertz, you can optimize these switches and make them faster switching. On the low frequency side, these are operating around the grid frequency, 50, 60 Hertz, depending on where you are. And they will see most of the conduction losses, not really many switching losses. So you can optimize there as well. So how do we actually make this ANPC topology? Well, this can be done with three half bridges. So we use here three semi-trans 20 modules. These are a nice power dense type package, uh, very small inductance loops. So the, the fast commutation loop stays inside of the module. So from DC plus to neutral or from neutral to DC minus, that's where the commutation loop stays inside of this half fridge with a very small uh, inductance. And the slow commutation loop, which goes further out to the AC side, it may happen over two modules. However, we're only operating at 50 or 60 Hertz. So you don't have to worry about over voltages in the system and worrying about large inductance. On top of this, the Semitrans 20 has AC terminals on one side and DC terminals on the other. So with this top right picture here, you can see that you only really need a three layer DC link. Very easy for interconnection. You can have a nice overlapping DC bus, bus, bus plate or very low inductance design. And then the output goes into the last module, again, slower switching, and you don't need that very low inductance. You'll notice also that you have very easy access to the gate, term, the gate pins. So you can put a driver right on top of this module without concern for um, very complex mechanical designs. A little bit more about the Semitrans 20. These are available in both 1200 and 1700 volt half bridges. Originally, this is focused on reliability made for both the traction and the industrial markets. So of course, traction needs a lot of reliability. Um, there's a little bit more effort that goes into um, the design and making it last a very long time. However, that brings cost with it. With the industrial side, these do not need that traction scale reliability. So we can have you know, solder chips, aluminum bonds, copper base plate, pretty standard module technology with very increased lifetime. So we say next level lifetime, compared to our competitors, we're seeing about three times the lifetime. And of course, it's also very power dense, especially compared to the, the Semitrans 10 and the, the, the market standard there with that half bridge. It's very ideal for paralleling and scaling. As you saw, these can fit right next to each other with the AC terminals on one side and the DC terminals on the other. Uh, that way you can lower the mounting costs and material costs for the overall assembly. These are available for the ANPC type topology without paralleling up to about 1.3 megawatts for air cooled and 1.9 megawatts if you're liquid cooling. For any reason, if you go to 1700 volts, we have 1,000 and 1,200 amps available. At 1,200 volt, these are 1,400 amp modules. 
Samples are available, and this will be released sometime next year. So then as we're looking at our ANPC type topology, and we look at the latest chip generations coming out, the latest chip that we have is the Generation 7 IGBTs. So we can use this to further optimize switching. So with these Generation 7 IGBTs, we, we do have some thinner chips available at 950 volts. We can use these 950 volt chips to reach the 1500 volt DC design. So 950 times 2, 1900. That gives us some voltage room for operating a 1500 volt DC um, operate, in operation. So not, uh, not even just solar where it starts at 1500, very quickly comes down to 1300. If you are operating a energy storage system and it's a consistent 1500 volts DC, you need to make sure that you keep the headroom for that, the margin. So 950 volt chip does do that. With these thinner chips, it does reduce the overall VCE set. Therefore, the overall conduction losses come down. And in this picture above, you'll see that what we have here is a technology curve. So there's forward voltage on one side and then turn on and turn off energy on the other. And typically there's a trade-off between forward voltage and turn on and turn off energy. And what we've done rather than, than going in the middle and getting average for both, we have IGBT S7 and IGBT L7. So IGBT S7 is, is more towards the lower switching losses and the L7 is optimized for low conduction losses. And how we use these chips in the ANPC type topology is basically use the S7 chips for the fast uh, frequency side, the fast switching side, and the L7 for the, the slower switching side. That way we see the benefits of low switching losses where we need it and low conduction losses on the output with the L7. Now we have samples available with the mini skip with a split ANPC design with the 950 volt IGBTs I just mentioned. Overall efficiency is just above 99%. Uh, with the maximum output power, depending on air cooled or liquid cooled systems, with air cooled, you can get about 275 kilowatts. And this is operating at about 15 kilohertz. And for liquid cool design, it's much easier to cool and you can reach about 400 kilowatts. <clears throat> So the Miniskip itself is a proven housing technology. We use this quite a bit in our motor drives. We have uh, quite a bit of mass production here, um, not only in Germany, but also in China as well for the Chinese market. Uh, and these do have the optimized chipset of the S7 IGBTs for the reduced switching losses and the L7 IGBTs for the reduced conduction losses. And when we say a split A and PC, that means that we have two power modules for each phase. And we've taken the ANPC topology, we've split it in half at the middle. So we have the vertical and the, uh, the, the, the top and the bottom switches, each have their own mini skip. So the input on the left side is a high frequency and the output is low frequency. So as an overview for the AC coupled systems, we have Semitrans 10 if you are continuing to use the NPC type topology. So this decreases the inductance between the power modules, allowing for the NPC topology to, to use two power modules per phase with a nice low inductance in order to increase the switching frequency. For the ANPC and the high power applications, we have our Semitrans 20. Uh, because the ANPC topology may be used, uh, may be built with half bridges, we can then use our Semitrans power modules for increased power density. So the input is high frequency and the output is low frequency. And of course, we have our mini skip with a split ANPC. So this is optimized with 950 volt IDBTs. This makes for a nice PCB mounted design and a reliable mini skip housing. Now, moving on to our DC coupled systems. So we can still have the ANPC inverter going from solar out to the grid. But then from DC to DC, we're really focused on this, on this converter. So this is a bi-directional converter, DC to DC. And looking at the topology inside of this DC to DC converter, the simplest form is a buck boost. This is basically an inductor and a half bridge. Um, so of course this is made using a half bridge and this L here is the large inductance. We don't recommend using 1700 volt chips for 1500 volts DC. 
The reason being this operates very close to the, to the over voltage limit of the chips. And if there's any uh, cosmic ray type events that could push this further over the limit, increasing the amount of failures. So one way to optimize this, this topology a little bit more is interleaving. Uh, we have quite a bit of customers that do this and um, it does help reduce the inductors um, a little bit, but you use three inductors with about one third each of the inductance, meaning overall the inductance is roughly the same. Um, this is made using a half bridge or six pack, depending on the size. And again, because this is a two level design, if you're going with a 1500 volt DC type application, we don't recommend using 1700 volt chips. Um, again, cosmic ray is the big focus here. So we can take this further and say, how about using what we call a double buck boost? And this is uh, basically two half bridges stacked on top of each other. Um, so what this does is allows you to reach that 1500 volts DC uh, with lower voltage chips. It gives you enough margin with the, with the over voltage that you have less of a concern about uh, cosmic ray failures. But on top of this, it also allows for much smaller inductance. Yes, you use two inductors, but each one are about one fourth of the original buck boost inductor, meaning that your overall inductance is reduced by about half. So let's talk a little bit more about the double buck boost. Um, so this is made for bi-directional power conversion, uh, extremely low current ripple. Uh, and that's across the system from a, um, a duty cycle of zero all the way up to one, you'll see that the three level buck boost has a, a much lower peak to peak um, ripple current compared to a two level design. And with this symmetrical design, you'll notice that especially at a duty cycle of half, that um, the, the, the switching frequencies somewhat cancel out and um, cause the ripple current on, on the battery to basically become negligible going towards zero. So we're able to um, keep the ripple current to a, an extreme minimum and we're able to provide a higher output voltage using um, pretty minimal changes in chips. So 1200 volt uh, chips say, um, say using our semi-trans 20 once again. Uh, the three level design with a neutral point also helps to reduce common mode voltage and EMI noise. Um, and of course, if you're pairing this with um, say an NPC or an active neutral point clamp type inverter from, from the solar out to the grid, you will also want a three level input from, from the battery side. So this provides the DC plus neutral and minus for that inverter. And last but not least, this is built using standard half bridge power modules. So this is proven technology that we've had for many years. Um, this is in very increased manufacturing and there's not a concern about a, a brand new type of technology or brand new power module technology here. And then adding to this, if you want to um, build a nice power dense system, you could move towards full silicon carbide. Uh, we do have a new portfolio in our Semitop E1, E2 packages um, using silicon carbide MOSFETs in this generation three 1200 volt type designs. These Semitop E1 and E2 packages have a very low commutation inductance, which is great for silicon carbide. If you're operating at very high switching frequencies, you need to make sure that you keep your commutation inductances to a minimum. Each of these modules also include Kelvin source and temperature sensors overall. These are available in both six pack and half bridge type designs. So if you're looking at interleaving to really push uh, the, the switching frequency to a next level, we have six pack modules or those can be built with half bridges. And with our Semitop E2 package, we have up to 250 amps nominal currents. And you'll notice that we have, especially at the bottom here, 250 amps twice. Um, and the reason for this, and we can do this across the board, we have a package that is optimized for either low inductance or more board optimized type design. And what we mean by that is, if we look at the low inductance pinout, so DC plus, DC minus, and AC pins, are distributed across the module. The main reason for this is to keep inductance to a minimum, we are focused on where the chips sit on the DBC. So the chips sit down below in a nice straight line. However, 
going to the board, this makes uh, a little bit more complex PCB, PCB design. So we have DC plus in some areas across the way, AC, DC minus, and gate pins overall. However, in our E2 package, the inductance goes down to about four nanohenries. In what we call the board optimized pinout, we have a clear separation of DC plus, DC minus, and AC on the top, middle, and bottom here. Um, this is still a low inductive PCB, PCB design and very simple. Perfect for paralleling or if you want to increase this to higher power. And just to give an overview of what this looks like, if you have a board connecting three of these power modules, you can keep AC on one side, driving pins below it, and then DC plus and DC minus overlapping at the bottom. This provides for a nice, clean and simple layout, overlapping DC uh, bus layers. That way your connection from the power module to the DC link is extremely low inductance and it allows for nice, easy paralleling of overall of the power modules. So as a brief overview for DC coupled systems, we have our double buck boost topology. Overall, you reduce your inductance by about half split between two inductors, keeping for a low cost uh, a magnetics design. The, there is extremely low current ripple on the battery itself at a duty cycle of about half. You'll see that the, the ripple current basically becomes negligible. And then we have our silicon carbide portfolio in our semi-top and E1, E2 packages. Silicon carbide offers the reduced switching losses. Um, and we have our optimized low inductance or easy board layout design for easy paralleling. So if you're looking at a very power dense design, one thing to consider is that, of course, silicon carbide does cost a little bit more than silicon. But if you're looking at efficiency, power density, then maybe silicon carbide is the way to go. So as a conclusion, we have our AC coupled systems. We have our DC coupled systems, AC coupled typically best for standalone uh, energy storage systems going directly to the grid through our bi-directional converter. Um, and it does make it possible to retrofit existing solar systems. Uh, there's not such a need to attach to the DC link of the solar design. And because you're going bi-directional, power factor is away, away from one, a lot more reactive power um, that's required by the utilities. ANPC is what we recommend for the best topology for charging and discharging the batteries. On the DC coupled side, it is more difficult to retrofit with this existing solar system because um, you may need access to the DC link. Um, however, if you are planning this all together, we do recommend for the DC to DC a double buck boost for the smallest inductance possible. Keep cost and size to a minimum. And of course, if you're using this, you can still use the ANPC for the solar inverter. And this allows for the power factor to go away from one. So if you have utilities that are making a higher demand for reactive power, you can do so without um, affecting the efficiencies and the, and the losses so much. So I wanna thank you for your attention and uh, I will now open the floor for questions. Emilio, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for the sound issues that we had. So I hope you all could uh, reconnect uh, with that reconnect button. Um, Concerning questions, we have received some actually, so we can uh, we can go through this, Emilio, if you if you like. Um, one question I received is, for example, is there an option to put the 950 volt RGBTs that you've shown into higher power packages? Because I think we only showed it for for semi uh, for sorry for Miniski, but is that also possible in higher power? Right. So the 950 volt, we we were mainly focused on the Miniski for one big reason. It's a PCB connection design. Um, if you're focusing, I showed the, the Semitrans 10 and the Semitrans 20. Um, a, a lot of the designs in the higher power um, use a lower switching frequency, such as three or five kilohertz. Um, and the big reason for this is they are larger inductance packages. So because we are looking at 1500 volts um, solar and energy storage, if you put 950 volts in a higher inductance package, you run the risk of being closer to the, the 1500 volts DC with your overvoltage. And we don't really see a big need for that yet. We're, we're getting better and better with our 1200 volt uh, chips. And uh, we, we haven't found a, a reason to put 950 volts in those higher power packages. Okay, understood. Um, why do you not use two level 
with 1700 volt for a standalone energy storage system? So for 1700 volts, um, the, the biggest focus, if it's 1500 volts, it's very close to the limit and there could be cosmic ray issues, as I mentioned. However, there's, there's also systems out there that are 1200 volts or 1100 volt systems. Um, and 1700 could certainly be used for these systems. Uh, one thing to consider is that as you use 1700 volt chips, um, these are typically less efficient with the switching. So you'll see a lot more losses and you won't quite have that same, um, that same low loss, higher efficiency design with say a 1200 volt type chip. So in other words, it makes sense to go to 1200, 950 volt chips. Certainly, All yes. Right. Um, then concerning the silicon carbide layout, um, I think you showed the the inductance for the um, for one of the layouts, but not for the for the one that that uses the yeah EC PCB connection. What is the inductance there? Ah yes, so that does still have a, a rather low inductance. Uh, about six nanohenry is the is what it goes down to compared to about four or five nanohenry, depending on which module you use for the low inductive design. So even if you're using the 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 board optimized type semi top, you're you're not really sacrificing much with your inductance, about one or two nano henry, depending on on the module. Okay, so but this is still still fine. Still very low. Yeah. Um, now we talked a lot about the um, power modules, but in the beginning you also mentioned stacks. So one question I got here is, uh, do you have any stacks available with any of these products? Absolutely. I come from the U.S. I used to work on stacks quite a bit, and uh, I used to. Uh, push them quite hard. So I love to talk about them. We actually, in our Semitrans 10 um, NPC, we do have what we call our SemiCube MLI stack. Uh, so this this is available for sample. I believe we're working on qualification, which will be available sometime next year. And uh, so we have our Semitrans 10 NPC stack, which can be used to get up and running with your design very quickly. Uh, on top of that, we do have application samples in general. So we offer a lot of support to our customers um, if they're trying to go from um, basically scratch to some design, whether it's a new topology or new module. And our goal is to make that hurdle as low as possible for them. So we do provide a lot of application samples um, in some of our other packages. Um, so we will have those coming out in the, uh, in the coming months. Okay, thank you for that. And then a um, question about Drivers, actually two, two questions about that. First one would be, uh, are there any differences between drivers for two level and three level topologies? Certainly, so um, with our drivers, we have say our SKHI or our Skyper, um, and especially our Skyper 12 and our Skyper 42. Um, there are some differences in, in the drivers between say a two level and a three level design. Uh, and we recently actually come out with our, our Skyper 12 and our Skyper 42 in what we call our PV version. Uh, and the reason for this is we know that a lot of the, the PV, the solar, is going towards 1500 volts and going towards three level. And um, we realize that the, especially in a short, short circuit type condition, um, in a two level type design, the focus is to turn the switches off as quickly as possible. However, in a three level type design, there is um, certain attention that needs to be paid in, in how you turn off the switches. You don't turn them off all at, at once. That could damage the system. So there is a pattern in which you must turn them off. So these PV type Skypers um, allow for you to adjust how you turn the, the drivers off in a, in a short circuit type condition to make sure that you keep the system safe and that you can turn back on um, quickly. Okay, that actually answers also the second question, which was which driver is suitable for, for the AMC ah, cool. or three level. So that's done already. And uh, then I guess that would be the final question, the upcoming one. Uh, what is the AC terminal current limit? Because on this on this uh, switches that do the 15, 16 hertz, uh, 50, 60 hertz switching, they have to handle the full output current. But I guess that pretty much depends on the package we use, right? Right, right. I know that um, especially Semitrans 20, uh, it has three AC uh, output terminals, so at this point, uh, it's it's pretty high in the sense that you should not be limited by the output terminals of the Semitrans 20. Um, I think in the end we show a power rating on these uh, on these uh, topologies in your presentation, and we just have to make sure that we can handle that with the terminals, right? Absolutely, yeah. I would say bring the bring the questions directly, depending on the application and the power module, whether it's you know. Um, uh, semi-trans or mini-skip type design, 
ask us the questions directly with the application and, uh, and we can work with them. Okay, perfect. So uh, we actually run out of questions now. So Emilio, thank you very much again um, to the audience. You should have seen that I also shared this, uh, the slide set um, by now, so you can download that. Um, thank you very much for joining the webinar. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it and you could take away some, some useful stuff here. This has been actually the last webinar for 2020, uh, but we will continue our webinar series uh, next year, of course. Uh, very regularly, we will come up with uh, great topics. Um, so it's just about uh, to, to wish you a very great holiday season, a good start of 2021. And uh, see you next year. Stay safe and bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.